in Surah Ibrahim. And Surah Ibrahim is a Makki Surah. And it is uh, a very, very powerful and beautiful Surah with many interesting, profound ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions an amazing conversation that will take place on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, Allah mentions in Ayah 21, right before 22, or Ayah 21, Allah mentions that those who were oppressed and weak, those who were the lowly class, will complain to the elite class on the Day of Judgment. And they will say to them that you were the ones who misguided us. So can you protect us now from the punishment of Allah? It's your fault we're in this situation. And this is the reality of every society that the movers and shakers are the ones who make the policy and the most of the people just follow along like sheep. This is the reality. Whatever is cool, whatever is status quo, whatever is the current flavor of the month, society follows along with that. And so Allah says in the Quran that وَقَالَ الضُّعَفَاءُ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا The weak people will say to those who are the arrogant that you were the ones who did this. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُغْنُونَ عَنَّا مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Can you protect us from the punishment of Allah? So those elite are going to say, it's not our fault. قَالُوا لَوْ هَدَانَ اللَّهُ لَهَدَيْنَاكُمْ If Allah had guided us, we would have guided you. Meaning they blame Allah. It's Allah's fault we're in this situation. It's Allah's fault, right? And they then pass the buck as they say. They pass the buck. It's not my fault. This is verse 21. Verse 22. Shaytan now speaks. وَقَالَ shaytan. So he's looking at this conversation between the weak and oppressed and the elite. Between the bulk of society and the leaders of society. And it is said that now the both of them want to blame shaytan for their misery. So before they can say anything, shaytan defends himself. So this is a conversation between shaytan and mankind on the day of judgment. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ When everything has been decreed, meaning heaven and hell has been assigned, shaytan will say, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ Truly Allah promised you the truth. Allah spoke the truth. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ And my promises were broken false promises. In other words, shaytan accepts the fact that he lied. And he says, you know what? Allah spoke the truth and I lied. How did Allah speak the truth? In every single commandment, in every single good news of linking worship with Jannah, in every single warning, don't do this or else you will be punished. Allah spoke the truth. The opposite of this is shaytan. Shaytan kept on promising, oh, don't worry, do it, it'll be okay. Oh, come on, you'll be forgiven. Oh, life is short. All of shaitan's promises were proven to be false. So shaitan will come and say, وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ I admit I lied to you. But then he turns the blame around. And this is the real powerful point of the verse. وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سلطان. I had no authority over you. I had no power over you. I didn't control you like puppets control, the, like the puppet master controls the puppet. I didn't control you. وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سلطان. I had no actual authority or power to force you to do anything. إِلَّا أَن دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I only enticed and you were the ones who responded. I was the one who enticed you. I called you. I promised you. I beckoned you. دَعَوْتُكُمْ I called you. And you were the ones who responded to my call. So how foolish is the one who follows shaitan only to be told by shaitan himself, I have nothing to do with you. I cut off from you. I have nothing to do with your predicament today. <inaudible> that evil people will indeed suffer the punishment from Allah. So in this beautiful verse we learn that shaitan will tell us the truth on the day of judgment. And that truth is... It's our fault for having obeyed him. He didn't control, he merely enticed. He will confess that his entire conversation with us is lies. As Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا وَعَدَمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا All of shaitan's promises were falsehood. And Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوًا Verily, shaitan is your enemy, so you'd better take him as an enemy. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, O mankind, let not shaitan tempt you as he tempted your parents before you. Because how did we all begin in this earth? 
What is the story of the Genesis and creation? How did we end up here? Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, la yaftinannakum shaytan Oh, children of Adam, make sure shaitan does not tempt you as he tempted your forefathers before you, your mother and father before you. He promised them and he lied to them. He said to them, eat from the tree and you shall live forever. And instead of living forever, we know the result of that. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the month where shaitan is chained up. This is the month where the evil shayateen are chained up. This is the month we are free from the influences of shaitan. What can we do very briefly to protect ourselves from shaitan? What can we do to protect ourselves from the influence and effects of shaitan? I'll mention simply four or five points because of time. Number one, the strongest protection against shaitan is ikhlas, sincerity to Allah. This is the strongest protection. Having sincere thoughts when we do any deeds. Because sincerity blocks shaitan's avenue into us. Allah says in the Quran uh, that shaitan said on the day of, uh, shaitan said on the day of uh, Adam and Hawa being expelled, shaitan said that, فَوَرَبِّكَ I swear, لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ I will misguide all of them. Then, some people say shaitan himself realized who he couldn't. Others say Allah responded and said, no, one category you will not. And the point is the same, that one category you will not be able to misguide. إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Except for your servants, those, uh, there's mukhlasin and mukhlasin, and the recitation basically means those who are sincere and chosen by you. So the sincere servants of Allah, shaitan cannot misguide them. It, this is the first protection. The second protection against shaitan is of the most powerful protections, and that is isti'adha, saying, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Do not trivialize this phrase, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Three times in the Quran, Allah says, if you get an evil thought, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ If you feel waswasa, if you feel a desire that's haram, what should you do? فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Then you seek refuge in Allah from shaitan the accursed. So, when you have an evil thought, try this. Try it. Next time you want to commit a sin, let your tongue say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And you will see for yourself, this, the, the thought will simply dissipate and dissolve away. Because you have turned to Allah, and turning to Allah expels the shaitan. Third, is to say Bismillah. So, A'udhu Billah, and then Bismillah. Bismillah as well. It is narrated in a hadith in uh, Sunan Abi Dawood that once a sahabi was traveling with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and for no reason, his horse began to rear upwards and try to throw him off of, the, uh, of, uh, of, of his back. And so the, the Sahabi said, May Allah curse shaitan. Meaning shaitan is the one who scared my animal. May Allah curse shaitan. So the Prophet ﷺ said, don't say that. Because when you say that, shaitan feels pride that you have attributed something to him. And he becomes big. He inflates his ego. He becomes bigger than a house. Instead of mentioning him, even you're mentioning in a bad manner, may Allah curse shaitan, but still you make shaitan feel, oh, I'm the one who caused it. Instead of doing that, if you said, Bismillah, he would have become so insignificant and small that he'll be smaller than an atom or an ant. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim as well. Third thing is all types of dhikr. Even to A'udhu Billah and Bismillah are types of dhikr. All types of dhikr. The more one does dhikr, the more one is protected from shaitan. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the famous hadith that dhikr is the fortress of the believer. Dhikr is the fortress. It is said dua is the weapon and dhikr is the fortress of the believer. Dua is the weapon of the believer. This is an authentic uh, phrase from the early scholars. And dhikr is the fortress of the believer. This is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So dhikr is a hisnun hasin. It is a protected fortress. And this is well known uh, to the righteous people that those who do frequent dhikr, they have, uh, shaitan has less access to them. So doing the adhkar after the prayer, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, doing the adhkar of the morning and evening, reciting the Qur'an, saying the dhikr when you enter the house, when you exit the house, when you enter the restroom, when you exit the restroom, when you eat food, when you finish food, all of these are adhkar. And each and every dhikr acts not just as a blessing, but also as a means of protecting yourself from shaitan. And the last thing that we'll mention is being in the company of righteous people. Being in the company of righteous people. Because our Prophet ﷺ said that 
shaitan is farther away from two people and he's closer to one person. Meaning when you're all alone and you're to yourself, then shaitan can come and whisper, do this and that. When you're in the company of the righteous people, then shaitan has less access to you. And the more righteous people you hang around, then the less access shaitan has. And isn't it so true, brothers and sisters, that when you are in the company of those who don't have that much iman and taqwa, you find yourself slipping. You find yourself doing that which you would otherwise not do. And when you're in the company of those who are better than you, you're lifted up. And you do better things that you would not do if you weren't in that company. There are many reasons for this. Of them is that in the company of the righteous, there will be angels and no shayateen. And in the company of the wicked and evil, there will be shayateen and no angels. So stick with righteous people. Have your friends to be good people. Have company that will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not company that will remind you of that which takes you away from the remembrance of Allah. This is the month of protecting ourselves from shaitan. Shaitan is our clear enemy and we will and we must protect ourselves from him if we want to achieve the pleasures of Allah. We will do it by number one, ikhlas. Number two, isti'adha, a'udhu billah. Number three, bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Number four, constant dhikr and included in dhikr is the Quran. And number five, being in the company of the righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the evil accursed shaitan.